Hello and uh, welcome to Edu Club for you again. And today we move forward to a very fresh chapter, and that one is compound interest. Okay, and uh, basically this chapter is somehow a formula related chapter. But here in this video, we try to find out every answer without using that formula. Because everybody knows uh, to find out the compound interest, uh, for that you have to find out the amount. Okay, but first of all, we try to recall all the terms that are used for the compound interest. Okay, now the first one is the principal, which is the amount that invested by somebody in the bank. Second one is the rate. Rate is the most important one. By using that rate, you can get either uh, huge amount of interest or less amount of interest. And third one is the time duration. That may be five years, two years, seven years, three years, whatever that may be. Uh, the time is calculated in years. Fourth one is the interest. Means after this calculation, what will be you get from that principal? And finally, the amount means principal plus the interest. Okay, now, but to get the amount, we are having always a formula, and that one is amount equals to principal whole into one plus r by hundred to the power n. Here the r stands for the rate. And n stands for time in years. But the important part is that in competitive examination we have very less, very less time period. And if we are using this uh, formula, it required lots of calculation. The calculation system a uh, little bit complex. So I'll give you some ideas. That without using this formula, you can directly find out the compound interest. Okay. Now, as I am saying before, that the most important part is rate. So, if the most important part is rate, we consider the rate in two ways. In my term, it is either good rate, bad rate. Good rate means that rate which is given in integers: eight percent, ten percent, twelve percent, thirty percent, twenty percent, whatever that may be. But the rate is given in integers, and bad rate is somehow that uh, in the form of decimal or maybe in the form of fraction: six point two five, thirty-seven point five. 16 2 by 3, 33 1 by 3. So these all are not in integers. So there's uh, that rates are called being bad rate. Okay, now. So let us discuss the good rate first. Good rate means that one is given in integers. And specifically in examination. We are having the time period for two years, or three years, or four years, maximum four years. So, by using that time period and the rate, we have to calculate the compound interest. The most common method for this one is successive percentage method. Successive percentage method means. This is R plus R plus R percent of R. If you uh, try to find out the total rate, then the formula is R plus R plus R percent of R. This is the total rate. So I'll give you some example on this so that uh, you can find out the total rate very competitively. Okay. So let the rate six percent and. Time given is two years. 
so if you need the total rate then how you'll find out r plus r plus r percent of r here the rate is 6 therefore it is 6 plus 6 plus 6 percent of 6 okay so when the rate is uh, 6 percent so what is the total rate that we are having 6 plus 6 plus 6 percent of 6 so 6 plus 6 is 12 and 6 percent of 6 is 0.36 so total rate is 12.36 now if you need the compound interest let us suppose the principal is x so compound interest is what 12.36 percent of x if the rate is 8 percent you can calculate by yourself 8 plus 8 plus 8 percent of 8 8 8 16 and this is 0 0.64 so directly 16.64 percent of x if it is let us suppose 12 percent so 12 plus 12 24 and this is 1.44 12 squares are 144 uh, decimal is 1.44 so 25.44 25.44 percent of principal so uh, the thing is if you need practice you take anything as r 10 12 30 20 50 whatever and ask yourself what will be the total rate let it be 18 percent so 18 18 36 and this is 18 square of 324 this is 3.24 so 36 plus 3.24, 39.24. Okay. So every time, if the rate is given in integer, you go through the successive percentage method to find out the total rate. And once you get the total rate, it is quite easy to find out the compound. Okay. Now, let us suppose. The time period is not 2 years, let it be 3 years or 4 years like that. We can find out. I will give you an example. I will give you a little bit easier example so that you can clearly understand it. Let the rate 10%. Time period 3 years. So first of all you have to find out the total rate for 2 years. 10 plus 10, 20, and this is 10 percent of 10, 1, 21. This is for two years. Now, but in this question, we are having three years. So, three years means what? Two years interest plus one, total three. Two years having, we are having 21, and every year we are having 10. So, 2 plus 1 means here 21 percent plus 10 percent, and the compounded form. 21% of 10. 21 plus 10, 31. 21% of 10, 2.1. So 31 plus 2.1, 33.1. Okay, now um, uh, let the rate be 5%. So for 2 years, what we are having? 5 plus 5 plus 5% 5 of 5, 10.25. This is for two years and uh, another one year. So 10.25 plus 5, then 5% of 10.25. So 10.25 plus 5, 15.25. And 5% of 10.25. So all total this is 15.7625%. Mind it, once you get the total rate, you can easily find out the compound interest. There is no need to find out the amount. You have to find out the amount, then subtract the uh, principal to get the total compound interest. There is no need of that. Directly, you have to find out the compound interest by using the total rate. I'll give you a little bit uh, uh, different uh, example. Let us suppose the time period is 4 years. 
okay and uh, let us suppose the rate is 10% so 10 10 10% of 10 21% is for 2 years now 4 years is what 2 years plus 2 years so 21 for 2 years next 21 for another 2 and then the compounded form 21% of 21 21 21 42 and this is 4.41 all total 46.41% okay let us suppose i give you uh, a different example when the rate is given in fraction or decimal but here in those cases specifically if you consider the competitive examination then certain fixed rate are always be given that may be 6.25 or 12.5 or 16 uh, 2 by 3 or 25% or 37.5 or 62.5 or 66 2 by 3 so these are the example where the rate can be completely divisible by 100 and that turns to a fraction let the rate to 12.5 so 12.5% when we are simply yes the percentage how it is possible 12.5 by 100 And after calculation, 12.5 percent is equivalent to 1 by 8. When you got a fraction, that gives you the data that if the rate is 12.5 percent, then out of 8 rupees, you are getting 1 rupees as interest every time. Whatever be the fraction, let the fraction x by y. means if you put y rupees in the bank at that rate of interest then after one year you will get x rupees as your interest okay let us suppose it is uh, 37.5 37.5 pins what 3 by 8. so if you put 8 rupees in the bank after one year that will give you 3 rupees as in So all total you are getting what? Eight plus three eleven rupees. You are giving eight rupees to the bank, and finally you are getting eleven rupees. But if the time period is one year only, but let the time period be two years. So you are getting eleven out of eight when time period is one year. But if the time period is two, you take the square of that. Eleven by eight square. One twenty one. Out of sixty-four means if you put sixty-four rupees after two years, you will get one twenty-one rupees. Okay, so one twenty-one minus sixty-four, fifty-seven rupees as your interest. Okay, now when the principal is sixty-four, interest is fifty-seven. Principal is X. What will be the interest? Or simply, fifty-seven divided by sixty-four into principal will get the interest, compound interest. So it is quite easy to find. But every time, compound interest is not calculated alone. That may be quarterly compounded. That may be. Semi annually or half yearly compounded. Everything is just the same. If it is calculated semi annually or half yearly, simply the rate given per annum divided by two, the time given in years multiplied by two, and if it is quarterly calculated, the rate per annum simply divided by four. And the time period given in years multiplied by four. Okay. So this is the 
basic of compound interest okay in the later stages we'll discuss some techniques that we have to use to find out complex problems keep watching the next video thank you